Think of it uh, as though voltage is a pump, capable of pumping electricity. And think of electricity like water flowing in a pipe, the wire being pipes. The bigger the pump, the more water it will push through the pipe. During an electrocution, it's actually the amperage or rate at which electricity flows into the victim that's lethal. Just one amp can kill a human, but how it kills is up for debate. Some people have inferred from the idea that the skull insulates the brain that not enough electricity will get to the brain to shut it down during an electrocution. There's a simple visual test to observe if voltage can travel through the skull directly into the brain. It requires a purchase from the local butcher shop to simulate the human brain. Here we have brain matter and we have bone to simulate skull. We're going to use an oscilloscope to see if current does get to the brain even when you apply voltage to the skull. An oscilloscope is a device that translates voltage into a graphic display. When there is no voltage, the screen is black or shows a flat line. So there's no electric current running through the brain tissue right now. I'm going to introduce some with a stun gun. This is about 2,000 volts. You're going to be able to see the current in between the two electrodes until I pass it into the brain. The current will disperse throughout the brain tissue. You'll see it register here on the oscilloscope until I pull the electrodes back out. So now there's a baseline. The oscilloscope shows high voltage traveling through the brain matter. Mankind begins to understand electricity in the modern age. Executioners capitalize on its lethal attributes. The inventors of the electric chair know that electricity can kill, but they don't know how. One theory is that the skull insulates the brain from the electric jolt. As a result, the electricity kills the brain by cooking it. An initial baseline test shows that high voltage travels easily through brain matter. But the brain is protected by the skull, and it's the skull where the voltage first hits the victim. Some people think because the skull insulates the brain that not enough electricity will get to the brain to shut it down during an electrocution. So we're going to use a piece of bone to simulate skull. And we're going to zap the skull and see if we still get the same readout from the brain tissue. Yeah, you can see still quite a bit of electricity going through the brain tissue, even when it has to pass through the skull. The high voltage easily travels from the skull into the brain. But how does this current kill? Does it cook the brain or does it short it out? There is a myth that exists that when uh, a person is electrocuted in a legal electrocution that their body is going to heat up to a boiling temperature and that their eyeballs are going to explode and uh, all these terrible things are going to happen. So I'm going to take a hot dog and I, I have to warn you that what I'm doing is uh, dangerous. I would actually characterize it as stupid. Do not try this at home. I'm going to put one end of a nail into one end of the hot dog. I'm going to put the other end of the nail into the other end of the hot dog, push it in a little bit to make some good contact. OK, here we go. There we go. And you'll notice that there's not a lot happening. This would be very much like a legal electrocution in the sense that the body itself isn't going to heat up massively. OK, at this point, we're starting to hear the effects of heating in the hot dog. It takes nearly one minute for signs of heat to appear on the hot dog. This is more than double the time of the electric cycle during an execution. So I'm going to unplug this. I'm going to see if we can get a temperature on the hot dog. The reading would be just a little over 106 degrees. Now, that would be uh, consistent with what we know about legal electrocution. And if I pick this up, uh, it is warm to the touch but it's not exceptionally hot. A rapid rise in body temperature is not enough to quickly kill a healthy adult. So just how does a person die when sentenced to the electric chair? Basically, every electrical cell in your body is going to what we call depolarize, and that basically means fire and do its job. 
Say you have one neuron in your brain that's responsible for you breathing in. You have another neuron in your brain that's responsible for you breathing out. You stimulate both of those at the same time, your body can't breathe in and out. And same thing for your heart beating, same thing for any system in your body. When you're firing all of those neurons at once, you're completely overloading your system. So the electric chair kills by completely overwhelming and confusing the human body. The brain effectively shorts out and eventually the heart stops beating. During a legal electrocution, the jolt delivers two cycles of electricity. The high voltage of the first cycle takes out the brain and nervous system.